game theory, a branch of applied mathematics that provides rational decision makers, or what we will call them players later on, a theoretical framework for involved players to conceive all possible strategic interactions. Yes, I said rational decision makers because this theory is widely used in economics. Economists are basically master strategists when it comes to their field, using game theory to get the better payoff for their party and leave the other party with the lower payoff. Now, there are two types of classifications under game theory, namely non-cooperative games and cooperative games. Games don't necessarily mean the apps we play on our phones or laptops. In this case, we are looking at situations that can be seen as games. Because we are given choices and we, as the player, can see and control moves that can greatly affect the payoff tables. Look at this picture. This man is given the choice to either go left or go right. What happens if he goes left? What happens if he goes right? It depends on the situation and to which the player thinks is the best situation. Non-cooperative games, as talked about in class, deals with how players compete against each other to gain the upper hand or the better payoff. Let's go back to economists. Because these peoples are the ones who control the game in terms of the market, say for example, there is a competition between Netflix and Hulu. The market structure of these two is considered as an oligopoly, having very few competitors due to the fact that both are streaming websites hence having Netflix control almost all of the entire market. For example, Netflix recently gains the upper hand amongst all the other competitors by creating their own movies called Netflix Originals. Hulu, on the other hand, cannot stream their movies because of copyright, leading to the worst possible loss in the payoff table. We can classify the moves of Netflix as a strategic independency, which is something that non-cooperative games have been characterized by. Cooperative games are different from non-cooperative games because as the name suggests, the players will cooperate and form coalitions with each other to gain the best possible payoff in a certain situation. With the question being whether a collection of players can find a binding allocation of the payoffs available in the formed coalition to allow them all to gain something from forming the coalition. Let's use the market of water distribution. We know that Manila and Manila Water are the two main water providers in Metro Manila. These two monopolistic businesses share close to an equal amount of households and provide them with their services. Theoretically, if one of them decides to form a coalition with the other, the kind of payoff they would generate gives great benefit to both their profit pool and in general, it would somewhat make their services to the Metro Manila households better and more efficient. Though it's just theoretical that two monopolistic companies will cooperate with each other. So before going deeper into the cooperative game theory, let me just say that I will not go too deep into the formulas. I will just describe the general overview of the cooperative game. The picture in the screen is me about 5 hours ago trying to understand the mathematics of this topic. Okay, moving on. Let us look at this example of a cooperative game situation. The name of this game is called The Sequential Quiz Show. Three players named Anne, Beth, and Cindy are facing a difficult multiple question with five options. Starting with Anne and continuing cyclically, a player can either try to give an answer or wait. If the player tries an answer and the answer is correct, the player will receive $10. If it is incorrect, the player has to pay $4 and is out of the game. If the player waits, the quiz master reveals a wrong answer, thus decreasing the number of options by 1, and the next player moves. By the way, I got this example from the book Game Theory Through Examples by Erich Prisner. This example is a type of game where three players will answer a multiple choice question and being given the choice to either answer or wait. In this example, we will analyze three situations. One is where two players will form a coalition and share the winnings. Two is which coalitions are most likely to form with a 50-50 share. And three is what happens when all three players work together and form a coalition. 
This extensive form shows what will happen if Anne and Cindy form a coalition. We are assuming that Beth knows about their coalition and will play along with it. Look at the path highlighted in yellow. That is the path of the Anne and Cindy coalition, which we will be given focus on. Look at the red dots within the line highlighted in yellow. That is the payoff of the Anne and Cindy coalition. Look at the numbers in blue. That is Beth's expected payoff if Anne and Cindy form a coalition. So, she wouldn't mind if they form a coalition because... Either she gains 0 or 10, or she loses 4, which is not much of a big deal to Beth. The second situation we will talk about is which coalition is most likely to form, provided that the players have to share a win-or-loss evenly. Provided here is a table of which coalition is most likely to form. The numbers presented in the table are the payoffs of each two-player coalition formed with each other. Look at, let's look at Anne. If there is no team or no coalition formed with any of the three, Anne gets a payoff of 2. If Anne and Cindy form a coalition, Anne gets a payoff of 1.5. If Anne and Beth form a coalition, Anne gets a payoff of 3.33. If Beth and Cindy form a coalition, Anne will get a payoff of 3. So if the money is split 50-50, Anne will not agree to an Anne and Cindy coalition, and Beth will not agree to a Beth and Cindy coalition. Thus, the only possible coalition here is Anne and Beth, although Beth wouldn't care whether it formed or not. Let us go into the third situation. You might have been asking yourself a while ago, but wouldn't it make sense for all three players to form a coalition with each other? Well, we need to find out the Shapley value of the players. And let us talk about the Shapley value. We use this when all the players will form a coalition with each other. Just remember that the Shapley value of a player is equal to the average marginal contribution to the payoff, meaning if one contributes to the table more than the other, they get the higher Shapley value. Think of it as something like, the higher the risk, the higher the reward. The mathematics behind the Shapley value will take too long to explain, and the numbers provided here in the example are the, uh, are the answers from the book. The purple area we see in the triangle is the area of each player's Shapley value. This was calculated based from their average marginal contribution in the game. We can see here that Beth has the highest Chappie value with 4.94 because she played higher risks than Anne and Cindy. In the game, she was the middleman in every situation. She had to either wait or lose in order to, to get the correct answer, thus leading to a high payoff value. It seems like Cindy will not agree to a grand coalition because she gets the lowest payoff. However, that is for them to decide if they will go on with it or not, since the three-man coalition is an option for them, and now that they have seen all other coalitions, it is up to them to decide how to get the best payoff for each of them. In this video, we have talked about game theory being the study of cooperation between rational decision makers. We also talked about the two classifications of game theory, namely non-cooperative and cooperative games. In this, video, in this video, we have talked about game theory being the study of cooperation between rational decision makers. We also talked about the two classifications of game theory, namely non-cooperative and cooperative games. We focused more on cooperative games. We also discussed the extensive form of a sequential game show with three different scenarios fixed coalitions between Anne and Cindy, coalitions that are most likely to form provided the players share win or loss evenly, and the grand coalition that all three players will cooperate with each other. In the latter part, the Shapley value was discussed, however in layman's terms, because the mathematics of the Shapley value is too complicated.
Game theory can be used as an analytical tool to help us understand the phenomena when decision makers make strategies. Game theory has been successfully to applied to a lot of disciplines, like economics in our example. Game theory can be used to sharpen and refine our intuitions to have rational reconstructions of different ideas, norms, and values among players.